just over a year ago, I goes on my stag do, right? What goes on tour stays on tour. <laughs> and all that shit. But, I mean, it's not as bad as you're imagining. It's probably worse. Uh, <laughs> what happened was, I went on my stag do to Berlin, and it was shit, and I hated it, right? It was crap. It was a crap stag do because, like, no, every man's stag do shit. I, like, we all act like we fucking love stag do's. We, all, we love other people's stag do's. When you go on your own stag do, men are cunts and they just terrorise you and it's fucking crap for whoever the stag is because your life gets fucking ruined, mate. Ruined. My missus went on a spa weekend for her hen do and it looked fucking incredible. I wish I'd have gone there. I went to Berlin, right? I wanted to go to Oktoberfest, right? But anyone will know anything about Oktoberfest will tell you it's not in Berlin. It's in fucking Munich, mate. And I, I thought I was going there. I guess the Manchester airport after 14 hours on the ale dress as a fucking leprechaun with half a beard, right? <laughs> and we goes to board a flight to Berlin. I went to my best man. Why are we going to Berlin? He went, oh, yeah, it was cheaper. And I was like... But there's f we're going to Berlin on a Monday. Have you organised anything to do? He was like, yeah. I was like, what are we doing? Go karting or something? He was like, oh, no, I've just got the... His organisation for my stag do, a four-day stag do, was a fucking sheet of paper, A4, with fucking biro written on it. Challenges, five things, right? That was his fucking level of fucking organisation, right? Challenge number one. And this does sound funny, to be fair. I had to cover myself in the darkest fake tan you have ever seen in your life, right? Which sounds funny, but backfired because I put that fake tan on and I looked fucking incredible. <laughs> I looked fucking stunning, mate, to the point where I was looking at myself in the mirror going, why the fuck don't I do this all the time? <laughs> that is... It made my eyes pop, my teeth look dead white, my willy looked massive. <laughs> massive. I don't even know why I put it on my willy, but it did. And cause that backfired, right? This is low. This is honestly one of the lowest things everyone's ever done to me. I fucking, cause that backfired, they escalated and you were like, well, challenge number two. They made me wear, right? Bear in mind, I'm a two and a half stone heavier than this at this point, right? They made, made me wear a small Lonsdale vest, right? Three quarter length combat Lonsdale shorts. <laughs> and size 17 Lonsdale trainees, right? And they made me walk around Berlin Alexander Platz, centre of Berlin, like walking through St. John's or somewhere, and just walk up to people and be like, hiya mate, what do you do? Now, that again sounds funny, but you know what? Like Dave, when I chat to you in this situation, probably a little bit nerve-wracking, there's a lot of people watching and stuff like that, but we have a little bit of banter, you understand what's going on, it's fine, we have a laugh, there's context to the situation, but imagine for one second, right, you're just out, I went about doing your shopping, and I walk up to you, fucking small Lonsdale vest on, three-quarter length combat Lonsdale shorts, and size 17 Lonsdale trainees, with a fucking covered in fake tan with half a beard, looking like a fucking gypsy clown, right? And start going, hey, mate, what do you do in a language you don't understand? <laughs> they say the Germans don't have a sense of humour, and they are absolutely fucking correct. <laughs> they phoned the police quick. <laughs> phoned the police on me immediately, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I, all my mates were there just going, hey, until the police came, and they were all like, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> and they left me there. And they were all buzzing off me. Like, because that's, a, honestly, right? That's the goal of a stag do. If I'd have got arrested and put away for two years in Berlin, they would have seen that as a fucking result. <laughs> that would have been the best story anyone's ever done. Like, fucking, oh man, it was mad. You know, we got put away for two years. He's still there. It's mad. <laughs> and I managed, it took me an hour to talk my way out of it, right? Because I was smashed. Do you know what I mean? It took me an hour to talk my way out of it. Gets back to this pub and they're all like, Way! And I was like, nah. Fucking no way, you just gonna all fuck off. That was fucking heavy, that you're all fucking pricks, mate. I'm going back to the hotel now. You've fucking done me head in there. You left me with the busies on my own. You're all fucking rats, mate. I'm going back to the fucking hotel. I'm flying back to Liverpool tomorrow. You've ruined this for me. And you can know what? You can all fuck. You're not even invited to me wedding anymore. You're not coming, and you're not coming, and you're. I don't give a fuck if you're my brother, mate. You're not coming to me fucking wedding. You can fuck off. And they were like, lad, come on. Don't be like that, we're gonna have a bevy now, we'll just leave it now. And I was like, no, honestly, I've never been more serious about anything in my life. You're all dead to me, you can all fuck off. I don't want ever want to see you again. You're all, you, you can all fuck off. And they were like, lad, come on. We're gonna go to the strippers now. It's like, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not weird, I don't go on my own or not, but like on a, on a staggy, I was looking forward to the strippers, you know what I mean? It's a good bit of the strippers. 
Oh, mate, we go to the strippers, right? Fuck me. I was always, as soon as we got in, the strippers always forgiven. You know, it's a good, mate, this is a good strippers, right? We go in, massive for one, right? But when you go in, right, you got the, like a currency exchange, right? <laughs> and this sounds stupid, but what they do is they take your euros off you and they make you buy this like boob money. <laughs> like a big stack of dollars. They look like dollars, but they got big tits on them, right? And that sounds daft, but when you get a stack of that fucking boob money, mate, you fucking walk around that strippers like Floyd Money Mayweather for a bit. You're just like, yeah, bitch, get that money, baby. Work it, girl. Work it. <laughs> fucking throwing that shit up and doing Instagram boomerangs and that, just like chilling with my boys. <laughs> well, great. And it goes in, right, goes into the strippers. I'm dead open about this, right? I'm very open about this. I don't give a fuck who knows it. All my mates know this about me. I have a taste, a, an affinity for the Japanese lady. I find them very beautiful. If you were to go through my porn search history, you will see <laughs> a lot of Japanese porn. There is a lot of pixelation in my wanks. And anyone laughing at that has watched Japanese porn. It, and if you haven't, it's incredible. I recommend it. It's just, it's just like a bit of pixelation, but it's like, ah! Ah! Incredible. I love it. And it goes into my delight. There's a fan, amazing looking Japanese stripper. Straight away, redeem myself immediately, my best man, because he goes over and he pays for the dance for me, right? And I go, sat, and she takes me in the back, right? It was incredible. Her name was Candy, right? It wasn't. It was Tom Al. Um. <laughs> it was. Just... And it was Tomo, and I found that out because I'm a fucking idiot, right? And you know what? I do like a lap dance, and they're incredible, right? But I, 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 you sat there with your hands under you, and you can't do nothing. And I get a little bit tense, and when I'm tense, I just start chatting shit, and I'm a very questioning person, right? So I just start going, ah, oh, you've had a nice day, innit? And they'll talk to you all the time because they're bored, and they've done that about 15 times that day, and every single time they'll get into a conversation with you, and every single time I fucking regret it every single time. Because they're just like, oh, I was like, hi, oh, yeah, is that your real name? She was like, oh, no, my name's Tom. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And, she, and then she started telling me about her life and shit. She was like, oh, I've just got, I've come over from Japan. I've, oh, yeah, I've, I've just put myself through school. I've got four kids. I was like, I know, Tom, I can see your cervix, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a lovely girl. We had a nice time. And he comes out. I, 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 I felt good, you know what I mean? It comes out, I'm, I'm like, I'm happy then. All's redeemed, but that's not enough for them. As a standard on Lost Stag Do's, any man who's been on a Stag Do will tell you that this, this is quite normal, right? What happens in these strip clubs is they will always have like a dominatrix one. And their job is to get the, like, the stag on the stage and make a show of them, like whip them and shit like that. So they'd organise that to happen and this one comes over and she's like got a belt and stuff and she's like wrapping it around my neck and she's pulling me to the stage. And they thought, oh, you're going to get embarrassed now. But they don't know me very well. I quite like being on stage. <laughs> and I had me fake tan on. I looked fucking incredible, right? <laughs> this stripper did not know what to do with me because I was naked within 15 seconds. I had a thong on and I was on the pole like this. <laughs> right? People went fucking berserk for it. I had businessmen throwing boob dollars at me and shit like that. It was fucking chaos. It went off in there, mate. I got like, a, she's fucking whipping me. She put wax on me nipples. I got a fucking stand innovation, mate. It was one of the best gigs I've ever done in my life. And I come off the stage and they're like, oh, no, mate, that was incredible. And I sat down, I was like, mate, I had more boob money than I'd gone in with, right? <laughs> Pulling it out of me fong and I <laughs> sat down, right? And, uh, but you can't, like, I'm like, I'm, 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 that's enough strippers for me, I'm sad. But like, you can't leave because you've got a big stack of boob money. You gotta, you, like, they won't swap it back. <laughs> so you've got to stay there, right? And that's how they get you because you've got to stay there and have a bevy then. But you know what? It's not the worst thing. It's not a bad atmosphere. The music's good. And that's why I was like, we'll just stay in and have a bevy. You know? You can watch the pole dancers and that's incredible. You know what I mean? I was fine. So I like, sat there and I'm around this table with me, Freddie, and me, me, Phil, right? And we're just having a little chat. And girls just keep coming over. Do you want to dance? I'm like, no. And most of them just move on, right? But the next thing that this girl comes over, and this, this fucking ruined my life, this, right? Because <sighs> this girl comes over, right? Well, woman. Woman comes over, right? And she was about 45 and from Glasgow. 
And that probably, you know what? That probably paints a bad picture of her, right? I'm not gonna lie. This, she was very pretty, this woman. Like she had short blonde hair, she had these piercing sky blue eyes, she had an amazing body. But although she was pretty, she also looked rough as fuck. <laughs> like rough. Do you know, like she was the fittest girl on a council estate at one point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like she's defo being fingered in a cemetery. 100% though. Few times as well. <laughs> and she was giving it the fucking hard sell, this woman. She was like, do you want to dance? And I was like, nah, I'm all right, you know, I've had two, I'm all right. And she sat down, she was like, come on, have a dance. And she stagger. I was like, honestly, I'm all right. She was like, have a dance. And I was like, nah. And she was like, come on. And I was like, nah. And then, I, what happened? Like, I'm, I'm, I swear to God, to this day, I am convinced that she hypnotized me. And two of my mates witnessed this, and they're convinced of it too. I'm not fucking, I'm not imagining this happened, right? Because she just stood up, right? And instead of leaving, she just leaned across the table like that, right? And just fucking stared. She just fixed me with these piercing sky blue eyes. She just looked into me soul and she just started, didn't even speak, she just started swaying side to side like this. You know, like the snake from Jungle Book. She fucking snake from Jungle Book me, mate. And I've never, like, I didn't even think that was a real thing, but she fucking did it. And I couldn't look away. I was like, what the fuck is she doing here? And then after about 30 seconds, she just went. Do you want to dance? And I was like, nah. And she was like, yeah, you do. You want to dance? And I was like, honestly, I'm all right, you know. And she was like, no, no, no. You want to dance? And I was like, I don't want to dance. And then she got even closer, right? And she stared into my fucking soul. And she pulled some shit out that I did not even know was there because she went, oh, yeah, you do. You've been a bad boy for mommy, haven't you? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and she went, you heard me. Have you been a bad boy for mommy? And I was like, mate, I had no idea I was into that, but I am into that shit in a fucking big way, mate. <laughs> Fucking hell. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, uh, 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 and she went, yeah, you are. You've been a bad boy for mommy. Come on, bad boy. And she just took me on. And I just walked behind her. I couldn't speak. I just regressed. I was like, okay. Right? And she took me in the back and she sits me down, right? And I'm just sat there and she stood over me. And she was like, Ray, are you ready, bad boy? And I was like, She was like, tell mommy what a bad boy you've been. And I was like, I've been a bad boy. And she just went, fuck off. <laughs> she fucking sparked me, mate. Not even like hard though. And I just went, fuck. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? And honestly, if you just, my, I, I thought my reactions to that would have been getting off, and I was just like, oh my God, I've been such a bad boy. And she was just like, fuck off. And she just kept hitting me. She kept hitting me, have you been a bad boy? I was like, bang. And every time she hit me, I was just throwing boob money at her, just fucking launching her at her. Fistfuls of boob money, just like, take me money, take me money. Fuck up, bad, being a bad boy, have me money, sorry. <laughs> then she stands up and she goes, right, bad boy. Open your mouth. <laughs> she fucking spat in my mouth. Nah. <laughs> mate, if you'd have told me she was going to do that, I would have flown back to Liverpool, mate. 
It's the most disgusting, vile, horrible thing I could ever imagine one human being doing to another. It's fucking awful. But she did it three times and I absolutely fucking loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely fucking loved it. I, I was thinking to myself, I don't even like this, but she was just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, I'm such a dirty little slag. Oh, I fucking swallowed it. <laughs> I've had a sore throat for a year, man. <laughs>